Chapter 1 Winter's Child Adora liked winter best of all. For when the world grew cold, the ice dragon came. She was never quite sure whether it was the cold that brought the ice dragon or the ice dragon that brought the cold. That was the sort of question that often troubled her brother, Jeff, who was two years older than her and insatiably curious. And but Adara did not care about such things. So long as the cold and the snow and the ice dragon all arrived on schedule, she was happy. She always knew when they were due because of her birthday. Adara was a winter child, born during the worst freeze that anyone could remember. Even old Laura, who lived on the next farm and remembered things that happened before anyone else was born. People still talked about that freeze. Adara had often heard about them. They talked about other things as well. They said it was as chill of that terrible freeze that killed her mother, stealing in her long night of labor past the great fire that Adara's father had built. And creeping under the layers of blankets and co covered the birthing bed. And they said that the cold had entered Adara in the womb, and that her skin had been pale blue and icy to the touch when she came forth. And that she had never warmed in the years since. The winter had touched her, left its mark upon her, and made her its own. It was true that Adara had always, always a child of part. She was a very serious little girl who seldom cared to play with the others. She was beautiful, people said, but in a strange, distant sort of way. With her pale skin, and blonde hair and wide clear blue eyes. She smiled but not often. No one had ever seen her cry, for once she, when she was five she had stepped upon her nail and bedded in a board that lay concealed beneath a snowbank, and had gone clear through her foot. But Adara had not wept or screamed even then. She pulled her foot loose and walked back to the house leaving a trail of blood in the snow and when her, she had gotten there she had said only father I hurt myself the sulks and the tempers and tears of ordinary childhood were not for her even her family knew that Adara was different her father was a huge, gruff bear of a man who had little use for people in general. But a smile was broken across his face when Jeff pressed her to him with questions, and he was full of hugs and laughter for Terry, Adara's older sister, who was golden and freckled and flirted shamelessly with all the local boys. Every so often he would hug Adara as well, but only during the long winters. But there would be no smiles then. He would only wrap his arm around her and pull her small body tight against him with all his massive strength, sob deep in his chest, and fat wet tears would run down his ruddy cheeks. He never hugged her at all during the summers. <laughs> during the summers he was too busy. Everyone was busy during the summers except for Adara. Jeff would work with his father in the fields and ask endless questions about this and that, learning everything a farmer had to know. When he was not working, he would run with his friends to the river and have adventures. Terry ran the house and did the cooking, and worked a bit at the inn by the crossroads during the busy season. The innkeeper's daughter was her friend, and her, his youngest son was more than a friend. And she would always come back giggly and full of gossip and news. 
from travelers and soldiers and king's messengers. For Terry and Jeff, the summers were the best time. And both of them were too busy for Adora. Their father was busiest of all. A thousand things needed to be done each day, and he did them, and found a thousand more. He worked from dawn to dusk. His muscles grew hard and lean in the summer, and he stank from sweat each night when he came in from the fields. But he always came in smiling. After supper, he would sit with Jeff and tell him stories and answer his questions, or teach Terry things she did not know about cooking, or stroll down to the inn. He was a summer man, truly. He never drank in summer except for a cup of wine now and again to celebrate his brother's visits. That was another reason why Terry and Jeff loved the summers when the world was green and hot and bursting with life. It was only in summer that Uncle Hal, their father's younger brother, came to call. Hal was a dragon rider in service of the king, a tall slender man with a face like a noble. Dragons cannot stand the cold. So when winter fell, Hal and his wing would fly south. But each summer he returned, brilliant in the king's green and gold uniform, en route to the battlefields of to the north and west of them. The war had been going on for all of Adar's life. Whenever Hal came north, he would bring presents, toys from the King City, crystal and gold jewelry, candies, and always a bottle of some expensive wine that he and his brother could share. He would grin at Terry and make her blush with his compliments, and entertain Jeff with tales of war and castles and dragons. As for Adar, he often tried to coax a smile out of her with jests and gifts and hugs. He seldom succeeded. For all his good nature, Adar did not like Hal. When he, Hal was there, it meant that winter oh, was far away. Besides, there had been a night when she was only four and they had thought her long asleep that she overheard them talking over wine. A solemn little thing, Hal said. You ought to be kinder to her, John. You cannot blame her for what happened. Can't I? Her father replied, his voice thick with wine. No, I suppose not. But it is hard. She looks like Beth's, but she has none of Beth's warmth. The winter is in her, you know. Whenever I touch her, I feel a chill. And I remember that it was for her that Beth had to die. You are cold to her. You do not love her as you do others. Adara remember her the way her father laughed then. Love her? <sighs> How I loved her best of all, my little winter child. But she has never loved back. There is nothing in her for me or you. Any of us. She's just a cold little girl. And even then he had begun to weep, even though it was summer and Hal was with him. In the bed, in her bed, Adara listened and wished that Hal would fly away. She did not quite understand all that he, she had heard, not then, but she remembered it, and the, the understanding came later. She did not cry, not at four, when she heard her six, when she finally understood. Hal left a few days later, and Jeff and Terry waved to him excitedly when his wing passed overhead, thirty great dragons in proud formation against the summer sky. Adara watched with her small hands by her sides.